Flat line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a treat for you. We're in Pier Park for the St. Joseph's the Worker Fair. Now this thing's been going on for over 45 years. They didn't even know exactly what day it was going. It's been going on so long, they got to reach back and talk to some of the older people to find out how long it's been going on. But what we got is we got a fair, we got music, and we got a Cajun cook-off. We're going to be cooking seafood. We're going to be cooking wild game. So stay tuned. Cajun living and cooking is coming on right about now. All right, y'all, I found two of the ladies out here that's helping put this on. They've been doing this for a long time. Let me get their names and where they're from. Joni Oquan from Pierport, Louisiana. Elrena Pondville, Pierport, Louisiana. All right, now we got a bunch of, this is early, all the cooks is out here getting things set up, uh, the, the crowd hadn't got here yet. Now tell me a little bit about what's going to be going on today out here. We're cooking some great old Louisiana food. Yes, yes. We got several cooks out here and, and that's not the only thing going on. I see we got adult refreshments, some cold beer out here. Yes, we do. We have fair, we got the fair going on, we have rods, we have bingo later, we got um, some good bands that are going to be playing. We also have church. We have all kind of different activities for kids, adults, older people, everybody. A little bit for everybody. Yeah, That's depending great. on what you want to do. Uh, it looks like the weather's going to be perfect out here. All right. Well, uh, now tell me, will not you tell me a little bit of the history about the fair and uh, what's been going on out here since this has been going on? Okay, first we started out with a crawfish jubilee years in, in the 60s, but that didn't turn out. We had it for several years. Uh -huh. Then uh, around the 1970, 71, we started with the church fair yeah. to raise funds uh, for the church so we could start with different projects and uh, just take care of our bills. Yes, and you was telling me most of the buildings built here were, were from funds raised from the fair. And, and in 45 years, I'm sure y'all raised a bunch of money out here. From the hard work of the community and the volunteers, the parishioners, the vendors, everyone that contributes, it's deeply appreciated. We have uh, some new buildings. We just renovated the church. Uh, we have a big church home. Yes, uh, yes. Religion building. It's just fantastic the turnout we have. Well, great. And, and the contributions. These cooks have been here since 4 35 o'clock this morning, making, starting with their rule, and it's just fantastic. All right. Now, we're fixing to get over there and start interviewing some of these cooks because I can smell the onions and the roux and everything filling up the air out here. And uh, one thing I want to mention about the the pier part it's a it's a i want to say a tight-knit community where everybody helps each other out and and stuff like this wouldn't be able to be put on without good people like that that's right everybody has a real close neighbor and if it's not next door it's still a close neighbor yes indeed well i'm gonna tell y'all thank you ladies for talking with me thank and i'm gonna let y'all get back to work and we're fixing to go see what those cooks got cooking over there I want to thank y'all for joining us today. Well, thank you. We have the best cooks. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. All right, y'all. I'm over here with some of the cooks now, and the smell of this is just amazing. I'm telling you, just amazing. Let's see who we got here. Milk Metrogene. From? Grand Bayou. Gail Leonard from Pierre Park. All right. Now, what you cooking here, Milton? Uh, shrimp fettuccine. Shrimp fettuccine. It's an awesome smell coming out of there. And you said you got 15 pounds of shrimp in there? Yep. All right. Now, now, for people that don't know out there, can you give me a quick version on how to cook a shrimp fettuccine? Well, you start off with butter and put your onions. Then you cook your onions down for about an hour, and then you throw your shrimp in there. Uh -huh. When your shrimp is cooked, you add your half and half and your cheese, and then you add your noodles last. Okay. And then the whole process takes about how long? 
A couple hours. A couple hours. About uh, about a six pack. <laughs> oh, probably a twelve pack. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Well, uh, now how many is this pot going to be full? Uh, or three quarters. Three quarters yeah. full. That should make uh, about five, seven gallons in probably. Oh huh? no, it'd be about probably twelve gallons. Twelve gallons. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Well, all right. Well, I'm gonna let you get back to cooking, and uh, I definitely want to try some of this later on. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Milton, Miss Gale. But how you feel about it? I'm comfortable. Good as can be, huh? <laughs> think we can get? Think we can get a look at it? Yep, sure we can. Woo, now that looks good. That looks good. That's beautiful. All right, y'all got two more cooks here. Let's get their names and where they from. Uh, Davis O'Quinn from Pierre Park, Louisiana. And Paul O'Quinn from Pierre Park, Louisiana. Y'all probably just walked here right down the road then. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he ran. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got you. Now y'all brothers? Yeah. All right. Well, y'all been cooking together a while? Quite a while. Well, cool. You got a big old pot of turtle sauce pecan. That's one of my favorite dishes. And you was telling me y'all didn't go out and catch the turtle. Somebody brought y'all some turtle meat. That's correct. Now, for the people that don't know how to cook a turtle sauce pecan, can you give us a little quick review on, on how to cook one? You got to cook a roux. Uh-huh. With this cooking oil and flour. Then you put all your onions and all that good trash. And yeah, 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 all yeah. All not all the secrets. secrets. Then cook that onion down, and you put water in, and then make the gravy. And just cook that gravy down for uh -huh. a couple hours. Then you throw your meat in. Okay. And you just gotta watch it. You add your seasonings, and you, as they cook, you taste it. Make because your seasoning gets strong as you cook it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you just gotta make sure it don't stick to the pot. Take about four hours, probably. To, four hours. At least four hours to cook this. Gotcha. Now, and how far are y'all along right now? Y'all in it a couple Ooh. hours, maybe? We in it right now. Probably two, two and a half hours. Okay, okay. And that's a full pot you got there. That, yeah. What's a five or seven gallon? Ten gallon. Ten gallon. Gotcha. And uh, what's the secret ingredient you got in there? You said you can't tell everything. Then you put mushrooms and you put uh, mushrooms, everything. Onions, celery, celery and bell, bell peppers. pepper and some parsley and everything. And just a little bit of Cajun love. The love. And that's probably what makes it right there, the Cajun love. Now, how many pounds of turtle y'all got in there? 30. 30 pounds. 30 Go. pounds. That's a lot of turtle. Starting to get real tender. Almost falling off the bone. Yeah. Like that's what it you should want. be. So you feel good about it? We feel good about it. Hopefully. We, hopefully, going to be number one again. You got it, bro. Smells great. Thank you. Thank y'all. All right, y'all. I got two more cooks here. Let's get their names and where they're from. Jamie Pineville from the great town of Pierre Park, Louisiana. Chauncey Pineville. From Pier Park. From Pier Park. Mm -hmm. And we got the quiet one here. And I yeah. bet you she's from Pier Park, too. She's Jamie, too, yeah. Now, what are we cooking? What are we cooking? We got a crawfish stew we cooking today for the cook-off. That is a... You've done right with that brew because you got a good color going on right there. That's that's a beautiful color, and the smell's coming out of there. It's really awesome. How many pounds of crawfish tails you put in? We got 10 pounds of crawfish tails. 10 pounds. And uh, you've been at it since early this morning. Well, I woke up late. We had yeah. a little uh, brother-in-law didn't wake me up out there. He was too scared of this competition here. He didn't <laughs> want any competition because he knew, he knows what's going to happen here on the outcome of it. I see a plan in there somewhere where, mm -hmm. where that happened. I think he kind of sabotaged my stew a little bit. I had to go change, so. <laughs> now I hear uh, this, the oh, wife's yeah. the real cook right here. Now, uh, um, tell I'm, us. I'm, I'm only the assistant. Oh, yeah, only the assistant. Only the assi I serve pot. Now, for the people that don't know, tell me tell me a quick overview on how to cook a crawfish stew. How to cook a crawfish stew. First thing you need is your wife to go and pick up everything for you. Okay. And okay. cut it up. Okay. And get everything prepared. And measure and bring it here for you. Okay. Start out with your roux, cook your roux, put your uh -huh. onions in, smother everything down, and you add your water, and then just let it cook. Just let it cook for a while, and then you add your crawfish, the last thing, and just let it cook until you taste, yeah. taste it. Add your seasoning, whatever you need, just to get it right. But the time, it's the time. Now, it's now all time. to you, what's your secret of to, that makes your crawfish stew stand out? Yeah, if I told you my secret, it wouldn't be a secret. Ah, okay. So it's okay. just a special recipe that we're using, 
and it's been around for a long time. So You've been cooking the same <laughs> recipe forever then. It's been around for a long time, and it's a special recipe. Gotcha, gotcha. But it's a secret. I feel like you could eat it on out of there. Get in there and bathe with them. First place. So y'all turn y'all stuff into the judge yet? Not yet. Fixing to turn in now. Fixing to turn in shortly. All right. What it smells well, like? Smell like a winner to me. Smell, smell like, like a winner. Like <laughs> Gavis Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. Have you ever run out of money before your next paycheck? Car quit running? Electric bill due? Time to pay rent? If so, call Quick Cash of Gonzales. Let Kim Cruz Paralu get you back on track with a payday loan. Quick Cash has been giving $50 to $300 loans since 1996. Most loans are approved in 15 minutes or less. Family owned, fast and friendly service. Remember, when you need cash quick, call Quick Cash. Located in LeBlanc's Plaza near AutoZone on Burnside. Hole in the Wall Seafood is your one stop shop for all your seafood needs with seasoning, sauces, dips, and trays. Local A Meat River Catfish when in season, Dungeness Crab, shrimp, frog legs, soft shell crabs, alligator, scallops, and fresh cooked cracklings. Crawfish season is now in full swing. Come by and get them, live or bought, with prices that can be beat at Hole in the Wall Seafood. Ascension Trolling Motor is owned and operated by Carl Singletary, offering the only Minn Kota warranty service center in Ascension Parish. He not only works on all makes and model motors, but offers pickup and delivery. If you can't take it out of the water, he'll come to you. On-site boat lift, boat trailer repair, small fiberglass work, and gel coats. He sells refurbished motors, parts, and accessories. He's also a certified welder and mechanic. Here at Ascension Trolling Motors, our mission is to keep you fishing. All right, y'all, got two more to cooks over here. Let's get the names and where they're from. Uh, James McDead, Jr., Donaldsonville. Roman Falcon, Pierpoint. Yes, indeed. Now, y'all got y'all got the rabbit sauce pecan going out here. Yes, sir. Rabbit now, sauce uh, how much pounds of rabbit you got in there? We got seven rabbits. Uh, they deboned. So oh, you don't have to worry about the bones. I would guess they're about, I don't know, 10 pounds. Or gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. Now, y'all been out here early? Y'all got started early? I got started about 6 this morning. From the color of that gravy, I can see you didn't just start. No. no. <laughs> now, uh, for people that don't know out there how to cook a rabbit sauce pecan, why don't you give us a little overview on a little quick lesson on how to cook a rabbit sauce pecan? Well, all I do, uh, I saute my onion. Get all my onions sauteed. I saute them first a little bit, and then I, I throw the rabbit in there. My onions, all my seasoning, you know, first, then I throw okay. the rabbit. And uh, I saute them together, and then I start putting my uh, my tomato sauce, my roux, put the water in it to get it to boil, uh -huh. to get it thick, and we season it gotcha. to tea. Okay. And uh, that's that's the way I do it. And then about how long does your sauce become? A good sauce become, you want it three and a half to four hours. And it's gotcha. a good sauce become. And everything should be tender and falling apart. Tender, falling apart, and... But well, this one looks like you tender and falling no, apart that's, already, that's right there. Be right. Now, what's the what's your secret ingredient that 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 you put in there that 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 makes your stand out a little bit more? Well, I don't have a secret ingredient. I just use seasoning. Yeah. And uh, I just put the seasoning to my tea. Now you've been cooking this recipe for a long time. For a long time, since I was about 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've done this before. Oh yeah. All, All right. right, man. Been good. Oh yeah. I think it's pretty good. We need smell a vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> About ready to turn into the judges, so it's yeah. it's crunch time. Oh yeah. Good luck to y'all. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right, y'all found some more cooks out here. Y'all gonna recognize this fella. Let me get their names and where they're from. Kyle Blanchard, Pierre Park. Jason Shirley, Pierre Park. Brennan Shirley, Pierre Park. All right, now y'all got a good team going here, local guys. Uh, what you cooking? Got wild hogs, I'll speak on. All right, now you gotta get out here early to start cooking up some wild oh, hog, yeah, huh? Oh yeah. Um, now, for, for the people that don't know about wild hog sauce pecan, tell, tell me a little something on how to cook a wild hog sauce pecan. Uh, first thing you want to do is take your meat and you want to sear it. Make sure you get a good sear in your meat. Uh -huh. Then you, you got to make sure you end up cooking it for a very long time at a low heat. You know, once you get your gravy going and all that, and add a little sugar to the end of it to get that ah, tang out. Get the wild out. Get that tang out of the uh, tomato sauce. And, that's good. Gotcha. Now, uh, how long does a hog sauce pecan usually take to cook? It all depends on what size hog you got. Uh, I think we got a 80-pound hog or 90-pound uh -huh. hog, something uh -huh. like that. And then gotcha. We've been cooking it since about 7 o'clock. Uh, how you feel about it? Oh, I think it's a good sauce. All right, bro. Well, good luck to you. All right. Appreciate all right, thank it. You. Thank you. All right, Kyle, we didn't talk about this one earlier. Now, this is a baked tilapia with a crawfish cream sauce. Yeah, and you got crab got. in there too. Got crab in here too. Now we didn't talk earlier about it because it don't take as long to cook this one. No, it's very simple. Uh, you got w heavy whipping cream, butter, and Philadelphia cheese in it. Oh yeah, that's got to be good, bro. With, with uh, all your seasoning, crab and crawfish in there, that looks really, really nice. I don't think I've ever had this, but I'm dying to taste it. Shut the front door. That's good. That's good, bro. I think you got a winner there. I hope so. Hope That's so. very good, y'all. You can taste the crab in there. You can taste the onions. You can taste the crawfish. And yet, still taste the fish. Possible winner right here. All right, y'all. Got two more cooks out here. Let's get their names and where they're from. David Oakland, Pierre Port, Louisiana. Benetton Flair, Pierre Port, Louisiana. Kennedy Oakland. Park. From Pier Park too? Yeah. All right. Now what y'all cooking, man? Turtle sauce pecan. Turtle sauce pecan. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, where'd y'all get the turtle? Where'd you buy it from? David David caught the turtle. He's All right. a, he, he used to be a turtle farmer back in the day, and uh, I guess he had a few lines and uh, caught some, some wild turtle yes, for us. Indeed. Turtles are getting harder and harder to get. I, I used to find turtles all the time, but I'm a, I haven't found one yet this year. But David is a turtle man. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, uh, tell me for for the for the people that don't know how to cook a turtle sauce pecan, can you give me a little quick overview on on uh, how you cook your sauce pecan? Well, you got you got to start with your roux, just uh -huh. like any other thing, you know, onions, bell pepper, a few right. other little secret things, and uh, get your roux going. And uh, from there, you know, you add your water, a little bit rotel, a little bit, you got to zig and zag, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Now. Uh, do you have a secret ingredient that you put in there? That that that, that, that that's that, a secret, you know. It's all everything's labeled. Nothing, uh, no secret. Everything's. Uh, okay. Now you've been cooking this same recipe for a while. Oh yeah, about 18 years. Really, really. Yeah. Gotcha. Now how long does it take your sauce to become before you're done? About four hours. About four. Gotcha. All right, man. Well, you got it smelling awesome right here. How many pounds of turtle meat you got in there? 15 pounds. Oh, uh, everything come out all right? Oh, yeah, that look good. Look good. Hopefully to see y'all at the podium. Me too. First place. <laughs> You're not first, you last. <laughs> all right, y'all found three more cooks here. Let's get their name and where they're from. Okay, Audrey Grew. From? Bell, Bell River. Uh, Audrey Grew, the third from all Bell right. River. Chris Bro from Pierre Port. All right. Now, you got the, uh, what you got going there? Uh, this turtle meat we Looking it down before we add it in there, we use the water. We'll make a uh, sauce. turtle sauce pecan. That's a lot of turtle. It's about 80 pounds. Man, who caught all that? I don't know. We bought it. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, we bought it. And uh, there's another big roux here. Yeah, it's a big roux with 14 pounds of flour. Man. Y'all plan on feeding a lot of people tonight? I'm sure. Normally, it, so. all, it all goes. Well, that's good. That's good, y'all. Well, y'all doing a fine job out here. And I want to thank y'all for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank y'all. My name's Daryl Rebear. This is Kenneth Landry. This is Kenneth Landry. How y'all doing? Doing great. Fantastic. We had to sneak behind all the carnival rides to get back here and see y'all back here. Yes, but I, I can smell it way over there, them onions cooking. We in the trenches back here, but getting the job done. I 
see that. It's all, uh, it's all part of the activities that uh, helped our, our uh, church parish be successful every year. Yeah. Yes, sir. Plays a major role in our success as a church parish. Now, uh, how much y'all selling those hamburgers for? You know? I think they're $4 a burger. That's well yeah. worth it. That yeah. looks like some good quality ground meat there. Very, very much so. So you get the smothered onions on it with the ground meat? Hold it any way you want. All right. <laughs> That's what I like. Well, thank you. All right. Y'all enjoy it. Thank y'all. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Just when you thought you had the best, there's better. The new Hustler Raptor, heavy duty welded steel deck, professional grade cut quality, premium Kawasaki power, all from just $27.99. The new Raptor series from Hustler, tools, not toys. Come get your Raptor Super Duty today at Gotro's Lawn and Garden in Gonzales. Marlin's Pizza has two great locations, one in Prairieville and one in Santa Mo. Dine in, carry out, or delivery. That's right, y'all. Seafood delivered free to your home or business. Shrimp, oysters, catfish, and frog legs. They also have po' boys, spaghetti, fried pickles, homemade onion rings, salads, and 100% pure beef burgers. Marlin's Pizza dough is made fresh every day. And this is the only place you can find the La Mex pizza. And oh yeah, y'all, don't forget about that seafood muffalata. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp. Groceries, fresh produce, beer, hoghead cheese, hot or mild, hot cracklings, and ice. Homemade smoked sausage, mild or hot, daily and weekly meat specials, 21 day aged steaks. We can also process your deer. Come on down to Junior's Meat Market and check us out. Dana, we have a flat. That's okay, Weezer. We'll just call Ed's Tire Service. Ed's Tire Service has been in business for 27 years. It's a 24-hour roadside service for on-site repairs. No job is too big or too small. So remember, when you're having tire trouble, call for my tire service. All right, y'all, I got two of the ladies here in charge of the best thing going, the sweets. Let me get your name and where you're from. Major Zumo, Pierre Part. Karen Morales, Pierre Part. Now, did y'all cook some of these? Not me. You didn't? I you did? did. Which one you cooked? <laughs> this one? Pineapple. Man, pineapple. that looks really, really good. I bet it won't last long. I hope not. <laughs> you better cut it in little bitty pieces, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now is the time. Give me a drum roll. We have Cajun living and cooking at LC videoing us today. So you're not going home empty handed. Rodney and Leslie Dupree, thank you. Pierre Port St. Joseph, the worker knows how to extend hospitality. Okay. We're going to start with the wild game. Second place in wild game is Romy and Madea. Come on up. Now, if you want to get your 
part done next week? Go to Romy. I tried to bribe the judges so that he would do my car free. Sorry. Second place. Come here, come here. Okay, wild thing. Blanchard Cajun Seafood. That is the wild hog. Right? They killed the wild hog that we knew got the bow. Thank you. Jason, Kyle, y'all didn't have to pay me to get y'all this trophy yet. Seafood. There was a tie between two of them. So these two are getting honorable mentions, okay? Okay? And that's the Oakland Brothers and Jamie Pondville Trucking. Honorable mention, seafood. Now look, both their dishes were very, very good and the judges couldn't decide which would be fourth or fifth. So, now third place, seafood, shrimp fettuccine. This is another cause of mine. I want to make sure it's right. Come on, Gail. Thank you. Second place. Blanchard Cayden season. Congratulations, bro. Oh, thank you, dude. First in wild game, second in seafood. And last time I talked to you, you was winning some crawfish balling contest, too, I seen. It seems to happen that way. Man, y'all doing good. That season in rocks, bro. Oh, Congratulations oh, yeah. and a thank good you. job, fellas. Thank y'all. Thank you. All right, y'all. It's been a great day out in Pier Park, y'all. Met some really good people, had some really good food. We even made it out here to the, they call it the Virgin Island. This is where the Virgin Mary stayed. And, uh, one of the big hurricanes that come through, everything out here was tore down, and the Virgin Mary stayed. So it's something that I had never come seeing out in Pier Park. Lots of things to see in Pier Park. Y'all got to get out here. And thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking.